We've heard about what books are canon and what are not. In this lesson, we'd like to look at the scripture to see how Ahai actually preserves his record according to his will. And we may know how to identify his books and know what books that we may not have had the opportunity to read, though they are his records. Can you read Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16, please? Sure. Seek ye out of the book of Ahai and read. No one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate. For my mouth they have commanded, and his spirit have gathered them. The Father's mouth commanded the things written in the books, hence they shall not fail. And Christ's spirit gathered the words of the book together. Hence, Christ's spirit has gathered the records for us. And the simple way to assess the truth of a book is to see if it aligns with the law and testimony, because if it speaks not according to that manner, there is no light there. Can you read Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20, please? To the law and the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Amen. And touching back on Isaiah 34 and 16, he said, Seek out of the book of the Lord, and none of these shall fail. They're the books of the Lord, there are multiple books, is not just one, as in like what we know today as the KJV Bible. The, there were multiple scrolls that they had of ancient times. The KJV Bible, the word Bible is actually a collection of books. So we can know from just the words in itself and what the scripture says that there are more than one books of the Lord. All right. Um, do you know what it meant, Zach, where it says, none shall want her mate? Yeah, it says, uh, seek ye out the book of Ahia and read. No one of these shall fail. So it's saying everything that happens is going to come to pass, right? Then it says, right. none shall want her mate. So none is going to go without. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, okay. Right. Everything's going to come to pass right. and nothing's going to be lacking. That's right. Amen. Thank you. Praise God for that. All right. Now, all these things from these books that the Spirit of Christ has gathered, this is for us. These scriptures have been gathered and given and kept for our edification. Can you read 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 to 17, please? Sure. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Yahweh. All scripture is given by inspiration of Allah and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of Allah may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. These verses let us know that though we may not have all the books that were ever written, yet what Allah has preserved for us, there's enough for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness that we may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works and become perfect. All right? And thankfully, the Spirit gathered the records for our salvation. And in the scriptures, we learn that the Levites were to preserve the records. So it's no marvel Allah and prosper them to do so from the days of Jacob. 
Can you read Jubilees chapter 45, verse 16, please? And it's concerning what Jacob did. Sorry. That's okay. And they gave all his books and the books of his fathers to Levi, his son, that he might preserve them and renew them for his children unto this day. Now, hear what that just says. He said he gave all his books and the books of his fathers right. to Levi. So that shows there were books before Moses had ever been given the books of the law. All right. And where he says that he might preserve them and renew them for his children until this day. That this day is referring to Moses on Mount Sinai speaking with the angel. Right. And he was a Levite as well. So you can see how it continued with the tribe of Levi preserving and renewing the records. You've seen that Jacob had books and his fathers had books. There were books like the book of Adam and Eve. The book of Enoch, the book of Noah, the book of Abraham, and Jacob's own books that he had written, at least that Levi had to preserve. Hence, the Testament of the Patriarchs, for example, speak of what they learned in the writings of Enoch to know that the forefathers were actually reading these books and getting edified out of these books to learn righteousness and learn also what was to come. As the scripture is said in Isaiah 34 and 16, none shall fail and none shall want her mate. Right. You have an example of Simeon. He testified to his children through what he read in Enoch about what they were going to do because he knew it was going to come to pass. Can you read the testament of Simeon chapter 5 verse 4? For I have seen it inscribed in the writings of Enoch that your son shall be corrupted in fornication. So that's an example of how these books of old, they were more than just the books of Moses, and they were also true, and the words shall not fall to the ground. Now, after Levi, Ahiah continued with the children of Levi, with Moses the Levite, after the Exodus, entrusting the words unto him to write. Can we read Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 2 to 6, please? This is Ezra speaking with an angel. Okay, second, Ezra chapter 14, verse 2. And I said, Here I am, Lord, and I stood up upon my feet. Then said he unto me, In the bush I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moses and talked with him, when my people served in Egypt. And I sent him and led my people out of Egypt and brought him up to the mount of where I held him by me a long season. And told him many wondrous things, and showed him the secrets of the times and the end, and commanded him, saying, These words shalt thou declare, and these shalt thou hide. If anyone knows who that angel is that's speaking with Ezra, I'll let you all take a good guess at that one. <laughs> so there we see, there it is, in the hands of Levi, the book's being preserved. Even as the nations sought to destroy the records as time progressed, and some did actually succeed, Ahia continued preserving and renewing his records through the Spirit with Levi by mercy. For example, like when the books were destroyed in the Babylonian captivity, the records were renewed by the Spirit entering into Ezra the priest to help us know that Ahia won't forsake us to leave us without what is needful for our salvation. Can you read Second Ezra chapter 14? Verse 20 to 22, please. And then we'll jump from there. All right. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 20. Behold, Lord, I will go, as thou hast commanded me, and reprove the people which are present. But they that shall be born afterward, who shall admonish them? Thus the world is set in darkness, and they that dwell therein are without light. For thy law is burnt. Therefore no man knoweth the things that are done of thee, or the work that shall begin. But if I have found grace before thee, send the Holy Spirit into me, and I shall write all that hath been done in the world since the beginning, which were written in thy law, that men may find thy path, and they that which will live in the latter days may live. Man, you see that he asked for the Spirit to write all the books of old, so that people would understand what is to come. Can we jump to verse 24 to verse 26, please? Right. But look, chapter, Ezra, second Ezra chapter 14. 
Sorry. Second Edges 14 chapter. and 24. But look thou, prepare thee many box trees, and take with thee Saria, Debria, Samia, Ikanis, and Aziel, these five which are ready to write swiftly. And come hither, and I shall light a candle of understanding in thine heart, which thou shalt not put out, till the things be performed which thou shalt begin to write. And when thou hast done, some things shalt thou publish, and some things shalt thou show secretly to the wise. Tomorrow, this hour, shalt thou begin to write. Then we see Ahiah heard his prayer and is going to give him the strength and give the people the spirit to renew the records as <laughs> he has his covenant with Levi. Uh, Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 42. To 47, please, let's see what happened. The highest gave understanding unto the five men, and they wrote the wonderful vision of the night that were told, which they knew not. And they sat 40 days, and they wrote in the day, and at night they ate bread. As for me, I spake in the day, and I held not my tongue by night. In 40 days, they wrote 204 books. Look at that. 204 books. And mind you, these were from visions in the spirit of prophecy in Ezra's tongue. Which is the testimony of Yache, as the angel told John. And now we can see it truly is the spirit of Christ that gathers the words from the mouth of Ahaya, as Isaiah had said. You can see, this is how the records were renewed. These are books that have been, well, they sadly got to the books, but these are how Ahaya preserved his records. Continue, please. Uh, I want to say something. Please. Well, this is how the records were preserved. And the 66 books in the King James Version of the Bible came from these mm -hmm. records that were rewritten and preserved. So right. I want everybody to understand that if you don't believe the 204 books, you can't believe the 66 books. So, and mm. I know this is a double-edged sword, because some people don't want to believe the 66 books either. But there's more records for those that want to believe. So just to throw that out there. Thank you. That's a good way to put it in perspective. All right. Let's continue seeing what happened in this event. Second Edges chapter 14, verse 45. And it came to pass when the 40 days were filled that the highest spake, saying, the first that thou hast written, publish openly, that the worthy and unworthy may read it. But keep the seventy last, that thou mayest deliver them only to such as be wise among the people. For in them is the spring of understanding, the fountain of wisdom, and the stream of knowledge. There we see of the 204 books, 70 were hidden. So that means only 134 books were published to the people. Here today in the King James with Apocrypha, there's only 80 books. Right. So that still leaves books that were published among the people that <laughs> we don't have, or we may not have all of them. And we still <laughs> don't know if we have the 70 that were hidden. Right. So you can understand how the KJV is not it. There is more, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Now let's look into the books to get a little more understanding of the books we have and the books we possibly don't have from that time. For reference, here's the 1611 King James Version with Apocrypha, said to contain 80 books. Now when we look into it, the books of Samuel, Kings, and Chronicles were actually split into two books due to the size of the books, and the letter of Jeremiah has been included into the book of Baruch when it's truly an epistle of its own. In rectifying things, the books of Samuel, Kings, and Chronicles are all three individual books respectively, and the epistle of Jeremiah is a book of its own, which brings the actual amount of the books in the King James Version with Apocrypha of 1611 to about 78 books. With this understanding, mind you that Ezra published these books revealed to him in the 30th year of the Babylonian captivity. 
So the books of the King James Version with Apocrypha that predate and are in that time frame are about 39 books, while there are about 40 books of events that come after that 30th year in Babylon. There are books like Daniel that are in between both the Babylonian Empire and the next kingdom that reigned. Then there's the books of the Medio Persian Empire, like Daniel chapter 5 and 6, and chapter 9 to 12, Bell and the Dragon of the Apocrypha, Haggai, Zechariah, Ezra, 1st Ezra and 2nd Ezra chapter 1 and 2 of the Apocrypha, Esther, and the rest of Esther of the Apocrypha, and the book of Nehemiah. Then you have the books of the Greek Empire like Ecclesiasticus, which is Sirach, both books of Maccabees, all out of the Apocrypha. Then you have the books of the Roman Empire, like all the books of the New Testament. So for our understanding, we only have about 39 books in the 1611 King James Version from those 204 books revealed to Ezra in that 30th year in Babylon. Now let's touch back on the books revealed to see about how many books we are missing today from those books. As we mentioned before, there were 204 books revealed and 70 hidden, leaving 134 books published to the public. Of those 134 books published, just going by what's in the King James with Apocrypha, we only have about 39 of those books in the King James with Apocrypha because of the books aforementioned were not written as yet. So out of the 204 books renewed by the Holy Spirit and Ezra, just going by what we have in the King James Version with Apocrypha, today we are still missing about 95 books that were published back then. Mind you, this is not taking into account the 70 books that were hidden. If we account those books, we are missing about 165 books from the books revealed to Ezra by the Holy Spirit in the King James Version with the Apocrypha today. And this is for helping us understand that truly we do not have all the books of Ahaya. Now, though we don't have all the books of old, Ahaya left enough to get us to understand what we need for our salvation and also to understand prophecy to show his people what will come now prophecy showed that people will corrupt the words of righteousness so it's no surprise that the kjv has inaccuracies or some things that weren't properly translated in there right. or some words that are the names of idols and such yet though i have showed they would corrupt the words of righteousness he also showed that there will come a time here in the end when the books will be given for the righteous to believe he's purging his records again and renewing them for the people enoch chapter 104 verse 10 to 13 please and now i know this mystery the sinners will alter and pervert the words of righteousness in many ways and will speak wicked words and lie and practice great deceits and write books concerning their words. But look at that. It was in prophecy. Ahaya knew that they would tamper with the words of righteousness. It's no surprise. None of his words shall fail and none shall want her mate. Everything has to come to pass. Now, let's continue, please. But when they write down, Truthfully, all my words in their languages, and do not change or minish aught from my words, but write them all down truthfully, all that I first testify concerning them. Then I know another mystery, that books will be given to the righteous and to the wise to become a cause of joy and uprightness and much wisdom. And to them shall the books be given, and they shall believe in them and rejoice over them. And then shall all the righteous who have learned therefrom all the paths of uprightness be recompensed. Look at that. Look at the comment I had you made a while ago <laughs> about having to believe. And hear what Enoch is speaking of. 
this other mystery that the books will be given to the righteous and the wise to become a cause of joy and uprightness and much wisdom. And they shall believe in them and rejoice over them. So they are going to be a people who they know the history. They have heard how people mess with the books. They did this and did that, but they believe and know that Ahai is going to renew the records. And there's still words of righteousness for us to learn from these books. And these people shall learn therefrom all the parts of uprightness. This is going to come to pass. These words shall not fail. Right. Ahia prophesied in Ezra of these believers to come that the books would be given unto for a help. Can you read 2 Ezra chapter 1, verse 35 to 40? And this chapter here is specifically speaking to the children of Israel. All right? All right. Continue, please. Your houses will I give to a people that shall come, which not having heard of me yet shall believe me, to whom I have showed no signs. Yet they shall do that I have commanded them. There's going to come a people that never heard the name Ahaya, that didn't get to see the burning mountain and things of that nature. Yet, having seen those signs, they shall do that he has commanded. Continue, please. They have seen no prophets, yet they shall call their sins to remembrance and acknowledge them. Look at that. Continue, please. I take the witness the grace of the people to come whose little ones rejoice in gladness. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit they believe the thing that I say. Amen. Amen. Continue, please. And now, brother, behold what glory. And see the people that come from the east, unto whom I will give for leaders Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Hosea, Amos, Michael, Joel, Abdias, and Jonas, Nahum, Habakkuk. That's Habakkuk. Oh, okay. Ooh. Yeah, that's supposed to be Habakkuk, then Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> the Greek verses, <laughs> which is called the name of the angel of the Lord. I'll let y'all know. This I, don't right here. Greek. I don't speak Greek, so I'm. <laughs> 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 so seeing through what he's saying he said he's going to give them for leaders these prophets to see that when people read the scriptures the law and the testimony and the records the people are going to be reading these books for guidance and this will be what leads them unto righteousness and though they've seen no prophets they're going to call their sense of remembrance by the spirit of Christ working in them because this is the spirit of grace that's being poured out for to cause you to see their sins and to repent and to go forward and do that which Ahaya has commanded, though we haven't seen him with bodily eyes. These people are going to be blessed. And Yache said it to Thomas, blessed are they that believe, having not seen, yet believe. So may Ahaya encourage the hearts of his children and all the world. And in light of the feast, we will get a full story of Purim. And Esther with the additional book of Esther that's in the Apocrypha that was preserved in the days of the Greek Empire during Ptolemy and Cleopatra of Egypt, wherein the Levites interpreted the rest of the book of Esther. So this story is leading up for a good example of how the records were preserved. Can you read the additions to Esther chapter 10, verse um, 13 and chapter 11, verse 1, please? Sure. The addition of Esther, chapter 10, verse 13, and this is in the Apocrypha. Therefore, those days shall be unto them in the month of Dar, the 14th and 15th day of the same month, with an assembly, and joy, and with gladness before Elohim, according to the generation forever among his people. Esther, chapter 11, verse 1. In the fourth year of the reign of Ptolemus and Cleopatra, Dosetheus, who said he was a priest and Levite, and Ptolemus, his son, brought this epistle of Purim, which they said was the same, 
and that Lysmachius, the son of Ptolemus, that was in Jerusalem, had interpreted. There we see this man was a Levite, Desotius, who was a Levite and priest, and Ptolemus, his son, they went to go take the epistle of Purim, and Ptolemus' son named Lysimachus, he was the one that interpreted it in Jerusalem. So you can see how the Levites were still preserving and renewing the records. And that's the story we're going to get into for the feast. Uh, Yako, you want me to run through some of the books that's missing and stuff? That at least we can identify in scripture? Or? That's up to you, brother. All right. Give a quick run through. All right. Okay, we have... So there was a 204 books of Ezra. Mind you, that's not including the Gospels, Paul's letters, right. <laughs> and things like that. So that's just from Ezra's time. That's from the Babylonian captivity. Yet 70 were hidden. So that took it down to 134 books were revealed to the public. And remember, of those 134 books, we only have about 39 in the King James with Apocrypha. So there's still about 95 books missing from those books that were published to the public and if you take into the account the 70 books that were hidden we're missing about 165 books present day from what was revealed to Ezra in that 30th year of the Babylonian Empire then you have now you have books that we have like the five books of Moses right then we have books that we may not have read like the life of Adam and Eve which in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, there's a reference from that book that Paul's spoken of where he said Satan as an angel of light, letting us know that they actually knew about that book. And then you have the book of Enoch. We saw how Simeon spoke of it. And then Jude in the New Testament speaks of Enoch. So we know they had that book as well. Jasher, that book is mentioned in Joshua 10 and 13 and 2 Samuel 1 and 18. And also information from that book is referenced by Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 8, where he speaks of Janus and Jambres. It's only in the book of Jasher where their names are mentioned, right? Then you have the book of Jubilees. We read in 2 Ezra chapter 14 that the angel said that he told Moses of the times. Jubilees are the book of the times where the angel, Ahaya, commanded the angel to write Moses all that was to come from the beginning to the end. So that's where Jubilees was shown in the book of second Ezra. now there's also more evidence of jubilees in what peter referenced when he said ye know that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation in acts chapter 10 verse 28 because the law of abraham that was given in jubilees chapter 22 verse 16 commanded as such when abraham told his children and do you, my son Jacob, remember my words and observe the commandments of Abraham, your father. Separate yourself from the nations and eat not with them and do not according to their works and become not their associate. So you can see how Peter was referencing that law from Jubilees and know that the book of Jubilees was a true record and one that they had in those times. Other books are also referenced in scripture are the Assumption of Moses it's referenced in Jude chapter 1 verse 9 about Michael disputing with the devil over the body of Moses. You also have the book of the wars of Ahaya that's mentioned in Numbers chapter 21 verse 14 and Jasher chapter 9 verse 48. Wherein in Jasher they mention that the book is a work by Moses, Joshua and the children of Israel. You also have the book of the man of the kingdom referenced that. First Samuel 10 and 25, which Samuel wrote, and also the Chronicles of King David is mentioned in First Chronicles 27 and 24. There's also the Acts of Solomon referenced at First Kings 11 and 41. And then the Testament of Solomon is a reference for the evil spirit Asmodeus in Tobit chapter 3, verse 8 and 17. Even the remedy the angel Raphael used is mentioned in the testament of solomon you also have the o's of solomon as solomon had many songs and proverbs according to first kings 4 and 32 and sirach 47 and 17. you also have the psalms of solomon as well by those same scriptures 
Then you have the Testament of the Twelve Patriarchs is a reference as well in Scripture. When Moses mentioned Ahaya is Levi's portion, as he promised him in Deuteronomy 10 and 9, that's according to the promise Levi was given in the Testament of Levi, chapter 2, verse 12, and chapter 5, verse 2. You also have the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel, mentioned in 1 Kings 14 and 19, and also chapter 16, verse 20. And the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah is mentioned in 1 Kings chapter 14, verse 29. And then there's the book of the Kings of Israel is referenced in 2 Chronicles chapter 33, verse 18. What else we got? The book of Nathan the prophet. That's the one I want. That's in <laughs> That's First Chronicles 29 and 29. Thankfully, I have revealed the book of Gad the Seer that's yeah. referenced in First Chronicles 29 and 29. Praise and that book was essential, man, because that book showed the true name is Ahaya, Ashere Ahaya. It it solidified it because Ahaya said it himself that that's his true name. Amongst other things that it clarified. Yes, it did. You also have the prophecy of Ahijah the Shilonite that's mentioned in Second Chronicles 9 and 29. The visions of Ido the prophet is mentioned in Second Chronicles 9 and 29 as well. Then there's also the book of Ido the seer mentioned in Second Chronicles 12 and 15. Then there's the book of Shemaiah the prophet mentioned in Second Chronicles 12 and 15 as well. Then there's the story of Ido the prophet mentioned in Second Chronicles 13 and 22. And the book of Jehu is mentioned in Second Chronicles 20, 34. Then there's the story of the book of Kings referenced at Second Chronicles 24, 27. There's the Acts of Uzziah by Isaiah the prophet referenced at Second Chronicles 26 and 22. There's the vision of Isaiah referenced at Second Chronicles 32 and 32. And there's the prayers of Manasseh, referenced in 2 Chronicles 33 and 18. We have the prayer of Manasseh in the Apocrypha, but not sure if that's the same book, because this book that's referenced in Scripture said it was the prayers of Manasseh. There's also the sayings of the seers that's referenced at 2 Chronicles 33 and 19. And the ascension of Isaiah is referenced in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 37, for Isaiah's death being sawn in two. Also, Peter referenced his prophecy in Acts of Peter chapter 24, where he said, and another prophet says, we neither heard her voice, nor did a midwife come. And interestingly enough, Isaiah was told to hide the words of that book. So you can see how the books were revealed to the righteous in due time but not everyone knew of it. There's also the Acts of the Kings is mentioned in 2 Chronicles Mac. I'm sorry. There's also the Acts of the Kings mentioned in 2 Maccabees chapter 2, verse 13. There's the Acts of the Prophets mentioned in 2 Maccabees 2 and 13 as well. And the Acts of David mentioned in the same book, as well as the Epistle of the Kings referenced in that same book. Then there's the Chronicles of King Ahasuerus, mentioned in Esther chapter 2, verse 23, and chapter 6, verse 1. Then there's the Book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Media and Persia, mentioned in Esther chapter 10, verse 2. There's the Book of the Chronicles, mentioned in Nehemiah chapter 12, verse 23. There's the story of a high car, referenced by Tobit in Tobit chapter 1, verse 22, chapter 2, verse 10. Chapter 11, verse 18, and chapter 14, verse 10, where Tobit references that story of what happened with a high car to teach his son. Then there's also the records referenced in 2 Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 1. There's the writings and commentaries of Nehemiah referenced in 2 Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 13. And there's the five books by Jason of Cyrene referenced in 2 Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 23. Then there's the Apocalypse of Peter, is referred to by Peter himself in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 12, when he speaks of things going in flame. 
because Yache showed him that in the Apocalypse of Peter, what will come to pass. Then there's the epistle to the Laodiceans mentioned by Paul in Colossians chapter 4, verse 16. And there's the Apocalypse of Paul referenced by Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2 about the third heaven. And then there's the first letter to the Corinthians before 1 Corinthians had been sent as referenced in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9, where Paul said, I wrote unto you in an epistle because he had written to them afore before he had sent what we have today as the first letter or the first epistle to the Corinthians. Then there's... Paul's first letter to the Ephesians before the Ephesians book that we have in the New Testament. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 3, Paul said, As I wrote afore in few words, so he had written to them before this letter that we have in the New Testament. And then there's a shepherd of Hermas, is an account of a disciple of Rome mentioned in Romans chapter 16, verse 14. There's also the book of Jacob and his fathers. That's mentioned in Jubilee chapter 45, verse 16. Then there's the book of Eldad and Medad mentioned in Hermas, vision 2, chapter 3, verse 4. Speaking of Eldad and Medad, who prophesied in the wilderness in the book of the Old Testament. And then there's the words of the righteous Joseph. It's mentioned in the ascension of Isaiah, chapter 4, verse 22, and referenced in the appendix of Levi, chapter 1, verse 90. So you can see through the scriptures, there are about 50 books, at least, that we are unaware of or are just coming to find, like the book of Gad the Seer, the lies of Adam and Eve, and the book of Enoch and things like that. So we have these 50 books mentioned that some of them we're unaware of. And there's those 165 books from the books that were revealed by the spirit to Ezra. And we don't know where some of these books fall into that, but may I be gracious to reveal what he will reveal. And at least we get to see that truly the King James Bible is not the only books that were from the mouth of Ahaya for our edification. Yet, thankfully, we have the books we do have to learn the paths of our rightness and may Ahaya reveal the books that he wills in the times to come. On the Hebrew Readers Church website, we do have some books that have been found and we're working to get them on the website. And we appreciate you all's prayers and support that Ahaya prosper the work to get these books up on the website for everyone's edification. And some books are already on the website. Feel free to visit the website. You have the link down below and check the books out. Great reads, great edification for us in our growth in faith of Yache Christ. So hopefully this helps show that there are definitely books that Ahaya has revealed and there are more books that we haven't had the opportunity to read and may he be gracious to bring them out. Nonetheless, we know that in his mercy, he always gives us enough to attain unto righteousness. And um, you have other books, what the Acts of Thomas, the Gospel of Thomas, um, the Shepherd of Hermas, the, the books of Clement, the letters of Ignatius, the letter of Polycarp. So the key is just knowing the law and the testimony to be able to compare, to see if the books are according to the light, to know whether they are true or not and may i be gracious and bring the books together so we can continue to get edified all right hope this was helpful and looking forward to getting into esther uh we have a couple of um comments in the comment section i want to acknowledge um uh, i think this is brother jesse uh santa's bond I'm, I'm sorry if i said your name wrong um it says um, Shalom, beloved brothers. If you read this, please keep me in your prayers. I just lost my dad two weeks ago. Mm. He passed at 89 years old and since then been feeling depressed and of little faith in prayer. I know I have to be strong, but I am weak at this moment. Sorry to hear about that. May I have mercy. 
I, I will definitely, definitely pray for you. Right. We we'll definitely keep you on our prayers, and we ask the the body, uh, uh, Hebrew Readers Church, and the body of Yaje to keep them in your prayers as well. So, um, it's a call for mm-hmm. prayer from everyone. For everybody, be so gracious and kind. All you people who operate in the fruits of the spirit, hey, it's good. Amen. And brother Jesse, if you're watching, still feel free to email us. We have opportunity to commune with you for a moment, either today or tomorrow. If you're more than willing to. What do I mean? And uh, right. shout out to Talon to all the rest of the family and brothers who wrote in the comment section. We we love seeing your comments, and you guys are always appreciated from us as well as we know that we're appreciated for you. And we thank Ahaya for the great works that he's doing in us and edifying us and edifying you guys as well. Um, so Ahaya be praised, and we praise Yache for all his great works and the Holy Spirit. So. Yeah. And be encouraged, brother. Jesse, is a, it is a feast day. Right. You got to put on joy is, today, is, man. Yeah, you got to put on joy, baby. Fight, fight it, fight it. Pray, pray, pray. We aren't allowed to mourn on the feast days. I'll be gracious to strengthen our hearts. All right. Anything else there? Um, that's all. Um, we had a couple of uh, compliments. We thank Ahaya for your compliments. And uh, may Ahaya just continue to prosper the work in our hands that he's given unto us. So um, thank you all. We do have a, another lesson we're coming on with after this. So everybody, please stay tuned with us. We are going into this Purim feast. So please, we're coming back on. We'll be back on within the next two minutes. So don't move out your seat. Or if you do move out your seat, go get you some grub. Come on back. It's the guy that watches left in America. We got another great one coming for you guys. HRC, 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 Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader Church.